let's start, let's start. Alright, so hello once again. Well, actually, it's the first time. First time we're doing a, <laughs> a, a, a Facebook, a, not a Facebook, a YouTube <laughs> live stream for the for Judah Dev. So we are doing this first time because uh, of reasons. Um, I think it's quite obvious it's because of the uh, this NCOV. What's it called it's again? It's called COVID-19. COVID-19. So of the, oh, yeah. uh, the DOS called Orange, we, we can't do a full meet up for everyone um but um, but at least we are all here today so i'm here with me uh right now with a bunch of my awesome friends who has uh volunteered to do this along with me yeah uh well it's frozen <laughs> my screen has frozen but it's okay uh we are okay we're cool yeah so wow check this out we can we can has screenception <laughs> okay, never mind. anyway uh, let's get back to this. Um, right, so uh, because of uh, of the DOSCON Orange, we have this, and uh, because of heightened uh, health uh, precautions, and because our our venue also has uh, certain requirements, and therefore we had to uh, change our meetup from a in person meetup to a online online meetup. But anyway, good to see everyone back again. Uh, uh, well, hello, hello, hello. hello. Hey. So I have with me a bunch of my awesome friends. Well, uh, let me present to you guys my uh, the Junior Dev SG organizing team. So here we and uh, they are the people that's behind the scenes, uh, helping with the meetups, the the mentoring program, as well as our um, dev, gym. Uh, dev gym, right? So uh, so maybe they can introduce themselves and they can uh, uh, tell you a bit more about what they do. Uh, basically, I'm Max, so I'm, I'm a full stack developer. I'm specialized in Python, and yeah, basically, I'm running startup with my friend as well, doing freelance work. So yeah, that's about me. Uh, mm. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm in product management. Uh, I help <coughs> with the meetups as well as the mentoring program at Junior Developers SG. Um, previously, I was in QA, and I'm a mid career switcher as well to tech. So, so yeah, I'm also like pretty new to tech in, in general. So yes, hi and welcome once again. Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm a software engineer. Um, I work at SPD. We are hiring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, I don't have, I don't have that, that much of uh, content as compared to these guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome hair though. Mm. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. right. Like He's been working from home, so so can forgive him. He's in shorts right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oops. Oops. Okay, and, and we have? Uh, hi, my name is Yishu, I'm a software engineer And yeah, my mileage at Junior Dev is currently zero So I'm new uh, Yeah, hi Whee! Alright, cool So uh, I also, uh, another thing that happened was uh, we are Originally we had one speaker uh, who was supposed to call in uh, remotely? That's Jenny Wong, and she's part, part of Human Made. Uh, but unfortunately, because of uh, other reasons, uh, she was supposed to speak at a conference in in uh, Thailand. Uh, but the conference was also cancelled. It's what what camp uh, Asia? So the cancel the conference was also cancelled, and so she's cutting short her stay in Asia, and she's flying back to England. So because of all these things are in flux she was a bit unsure about being able to give us a good quality uh, talk online so also um, but anyway take care Jenny uh, have a safe flight home uh, in any case uh, right so let's uh, so what I hope to do is to uh, throw a few questions for you guys and even for the people in our live stream so if you have any questions uh, do throw a question at us or if you are on uh, the Judah uh, if you're on any of our channels, for example, if you are on, uh, I don't know which channel, you are, you are on the De uh, Def, uh, Def SG channel, uh, you can go there and ask questions from for, for us, right? So, if you have any questions about uh, how to excel as a junior developer, uh, or how do, how do you, okay, fine, that's first question. How is your journey so far as a, as a developer, right? I mean, I know you've been doing this for a couple of years. Uh, Jacob as well and Yishu. So, how is your experience now like as a, a developer be, compared to when you first started? Right. Uh, so basically, yeah. How is your journey like, and how is it different now that you're like a year or two into this into this uh, career? 
Um, so for me, actually, I started off with um, as an intern. So I didn't start off as because I, I didn't start off as a software developer at the start. So I went to go. I went to become a sales rep, and because of that, uh, after about one year later, I actually thought of going to web development uh, using Django. Mm. So because of that, um, for me so far, my learning curve is actually mostly on more in terms of design aspects of it, and also more towards how to build stuff or developer practices like PDD and stuff. So the more I learn, the more. Uh, <coughs> More unsure of myself. <laughs> unsure of yourself. Why? Uh, unsure what do you mean? of myself in terms of not uh, not knowing enough, lah. Especially okay. there's a lot of uh, job interviews that require specific skill sets like TDD or understanding solid design as well. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So that's, cool. that's basically what I've been going through, and also this year I'm planning to learn more about it so that to help me understand and actually help me become a senior dev or or C- CTO as well. Yeah. Cool. And Jacob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Arrow you long. Um so question was how what was it again? Accelerate. <laughs> so uh What's you, your you, feeling experience oh. after been doing uh, development work for a while? Oh now? okay, okay. As compared to the past. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> um so for myself I think um I think I've been in development for about five years. I, I think I'm not sure. Um, it's been a while, um, but I think at the start, um, there hasn't been much of a community. Um, so I think learning was a lot more difficult. Like in terms of <coughs> the resources, in terms of who to look for, and um, over the years, I think thanks to like efforts on Michael and. Um, and also people in, in the community that um, it has really I mean it takes a village to, to bring up the uh, I forgot that, that, that phrase but it takes a village to bring up to bring up <laughs> community. Yeah, child. Yeah, a child yes, yes. <laughs> yes. so um, <coughs> yeah I think okay. thanks to thanks to those Something efforts that software you can at least now I find that it's a lot easier for junior developers to actually get into um, <coughs> development or yeah. even for someone who is doing a mid-career switch to get into development because of um, this uh, support. Yeah. So you're a web developer right now, right? So I guess you've been doing... Uh, so when you first started doing web development, uh, how, how was this? Four years ago? Um, Four or five years. Ago. Four or five years ago. How is that? How is it com- back like back then compared to now, right? So, um, so <coughs> I think when I initially started, I think even even before starting as a career as in school, it's I mean we were just using. I think it was like, Lamp stack. Um, but then now you have so many flavors, so many different tools that. Um, it is, I wouldn't say it's harder to get in, it's just that it's a lot more confusing for someone who's new because there's so much to choose from that you don't really know what to choose from or whether these tools are right for you. Um, but in terms of learning, I think there's so much more like tutorials uh, that are available online for you to actually pick up. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, and for issue? <laughs> okay. mm. So I think when I was uh, when I was more junior, I would feel that what I'm responsible for is myself. So I just don't have to screw things up. Um, I just have to produce things that I'm told to do. So like, um, yeah. So what I need to do is just that I need to make sure that I'm not I. I'm not screwed up, uh, that's it. But then like I guess like when I become <laughs> more senior, you realize that you're not just there to uh, maximize the output of yourself. You are trying to maximize the output of like someone else or like the whole team. So uh, you make decisions knowing that what you do now is gonna help everyone in the long run. So uh, I guess that's a change mainly. 
Cool. So there is a question that we saw on the on the YouTube chat. Uh, so how do you identify a developer as how do you ident identify a developer as a junior and and a senior developer? I mean, what's the difference between a junior and a senior developer? In your view, in your view, what is the difference between a junior and a senior developer? <laughs> Sorry? I think she just answered Yeah, I think yeah. this is probably the most qualified. She just, she just, I mean, I said she just answered that. She just answered that, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, what, what, like, like in the early days, you can screw up easily, but now you're like, oh, you gotta be more careful and all that stuff. You tend to be more careful, is that right? Oh, you need you tend to be responsible for a lot of other things. Uh, yeah. Just yourself. Okay, so that's, that's pretty cool. How about Jacob for yourself? Um, <coughs> something similar to what she has said. Um, I think now I think in terms of um, when I look at project, think, think of <coughs> whether my code is maintainable, um, <coughs> whether there's documentation done, um, I'll think of the architecture, it's, it's a lot more planning rather than execution, whereas as, as, as a junior it's usually more of like, okay, someone tells you, okay, this is, this is what you have to do. Um, give me a website and give me these pages and stuff like that so it's more top down but now as a, as a senior I think it's more of you get to look at a project at a much higher level and, um, and you try to think of solutions to that yeah mm -hmm. cool so we have a bit more of a macro view of, of your code yeah. rather than uh, just being in your own little silo, fixing mm -hmm. your own little mm -hmm. bugs, but you like you have a bit more perspective yeah. of all the all, all the moving parts around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it a conscious effort to kind of like go out and figure out all these little moving parts around you, or was it more of a? By the way, I've been doing this. I've been doing this. I'm doing this. After a while, you just kind of get used, get into every single piece of the puzzle and learn everything. Or is it you deliberately go out? I want to know more about the back end. I want to know more about the you know. Mm. Um, I think it's a mix of both. So at least for me, it's it's kind of like um, because I'm more front end focused. So mm -hmm. it's initially it'll be more okay. I, I like front end, front end, front end, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then there'll be a project where you'll be thrown in, and then you'll probably be asked to work on something on on the back end, and then that's probably where you realize, oh, I need to actually know this stuff or oh, oh, this can be implemented in such a way um, so I think it's kind of better to have more um, breath than just specializing in um, one area mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah back in the day you'd be like oh Node.js or rather, your web application is just like, oh, include a JavaScript yeah. and you're done, right? And now it's like, oh, how do I package this damn shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot more things you need to deal with, right? And then being able to see the whole picture does help you in becoming more experienced and uh, being a bit more of a go-to person that people ask you, how do I do mm -hmm. this? How do I mm -hmm. do that? Definitely, right? yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Rachel? I'm... I'm in product management now. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> and we just skip Rachel for today. Max. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, I mean, you as a as a product manager, you do work with a lot of uh, you do work with developers, yes, right? Yes, I I work with a mix of senior and, and junior developers. Right, right. So I mean, based on your experience working with senior and junior developers, what are the main differences that you find in interacting with them? Right. So um, so for me, I've worked um. Uh, so uh, when I was doing QA, I was also, I guess, closer to a junior developer, but maybe doing a lot less development work. Mm -hmm. So um, in a way, I have a bit of experience being a junior developer. So um, when I was a junior QA, uh, I, was, I felt it was very much more like um, you, do what, you do what you are uh, asked to do, and maybe you just ask questions. And I guess you're, it's um, more forgivable for you to ask questions than to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I think also it's a, it's, it should be an opportunity for you to learn. As in, and even if, um, you know, if people don't tell you why things are done, you should also, it should be up to you to take the initiative to ask 
why things are done. And also, it will be good even for a junior developer to kind of ask, why are you doing this? How, what, uh, uh, how is it in place in when it comes to the whole project? Um, or like maybe why do you do a certain practice or choose a certain stack? It would be good for you to understand because uh, it makes you appreciate like uh, where you are in terms of the whole process of building the product that you're doing. And uh, for a product manager, for me, I find that senior developers are a lot more um, well-versed in terms of the pros and cons of using specific stacks for the kind of work. Um, and even like the more, I guess, towards like principle level, there, there will be those who are more well-versed in terms of the architecture of how you, you build the databases. And like if you want, depending on whether you're planning to expand the business, or you want to, or maybe you're expecting an increase in maybe number of users, or you're changing the way that you're structuring the product, and you may have to change like how the database is built, how the front end is built, and so um, usually the more experienced software and engineers have um, able to give better insights into into uh, decisions made on a more macro level, and these ultimately help uh, product managers and project managers to decide. Um, what direction to take the product or, or features and also like for the project manager especially how do they break it down into user stories and who they should assign user stories to. Mm -hmm. So in a way um, uh, everyone plays a part regardless whether you're a junior or, or whether you're senior or principal level or even like CTO and mm -hmm. so it's like uh, just because you um, may not be so experienced now doesn't mean that you're no less valuable to the team. So um, so keep on learning and have a good attitude towards yeah. being a developer. Yeah. I think it's pretty good, very good, uh, very insightful, I guess. Um, Max? Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel the key thing is actually when you actually go to a, become a senior developer, you actually need to do um, mentoring. That's actually one key thing actually you need to bring up and teach the, those who are uh, lesser experienced from you. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that you need to do. The other part is actually more towards the, as, as Rachel said and every other people said, that is more towards the project management or higher overview. So sometimes you are required to actually deal with people who are non-technical. So you need to actually reduce your words or terminologies to the bare minimum or simple. Right, right. Like, like let me, uh, how to talk to a kid, a five-year-old kid, that kind of level. <laughs> or some, <laughs> basically it's as simple as possible so that people, okay. so people can well, actually absorb it. But it's well. true, it's true. Yeah. Because okay. you can't say it in a way that it's too technical to the point that they don't understand. Right. So you need to reuse it to the point that actually you are literally like a teacher to say, oh, so I lo I'm looking for this kind of thing. Like maybe I want to build a spaceship, all those things. So I need to dumb it down as possible to make it easy for them to absorb because you know the technicalities of it. But mm -hmm. some, some of them who are not trained in it, they may not know it and it's very hard for them to absorb the technical uh, terminologies as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so most it's more of the development of soft skills as well. That's why I feel uh, when you actually go towards a senior developer. Cool. Yeah. You have a comment? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, it's, an, it's true because mm -hmm. um, especially when you're working with project managers and product managers, um, not every one of them will have had a background in, so in software engineering. Mm -hmm. Or if it may not even be like the project managers or product managers, even when you're, when you're working with the UX designers and researchers because uh, especially for like front end um, yeah. you get the design for the UI from the designers and so it is better that um, that you're able to have like uh, be able to communicate with non-technical people uh, especially your project managers because certain things like resources like budget or how many man hours that need to be built to the client or maybe say to set the budget if it's an internal project a lot mm -hmm. of this has to be taken into account and so if you want to be able to justify using certain stacks or or needing how many hours or how many or need to hire more people or, or whether certain certain requests are feasible or not it's better to be able to explain it in a way that is simple enough for someone with no technical knowledge at right, all right. to um to understand and so it's in a way it forms empathy mm -hmm. and uh, it's something that I think should be learned by everyone just to make it easier for everyone to work together. Yeah, and, so it's, and it's, mm. I really learned this a lot, um, especially after I transitioned towards a product management role. Yeah, right. yeah. Yes, yeah. So ultimately, it's actually you need to be very tactful when you 
when you reach a senior level, you might need to be tactful in how you deal with, how you phrase your words so that people may not have the wrong impression. Because I myself have problems in this as well because when I actually say it in a very direct way, they might literally mean that is actually what ah, I mean. Okay, yeah, so that's okay. why uh, you sometimes you need to be very tactful and you need to right. have the soft skills required to actually do it because if not, no one wants to deal with a very arrogant person as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, especially mm-hmm. some some of us, if when we actually experience or very good at it, we become very uh, a hole. So that's why we do not want to. Very right. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. So let's let's go a little bit into the as a developer as you go as you as you progress in your career. What are the things you look out for to kind of like keep you abreast and you also keep you humble, right? I think that they are, like for me, for example, I, I, when I see new technology, I'm always like, wow, this is like, cool this is pretty cool. Like, you know, how do I, uh, or how do I get this thing done, right? And, and I'm always, I'm back to that square one again where I'm learning new things. Uh, and I find that joy in like learning new, new knowledge and, and uh, even experimenting new things. That keeps me kind of grounded uh, and even, uh, building up, you, I use that opportunity always to kind of like build up my my knowledge of of new technologies by just doing tutorials and, mm-hmm. and learning in public essentially, right? So mm-hmm. these are kind of things that I that I do to kind of keep myself grounded and and relevant and abreast with the technologies. Um, it, I think it's something that we all have to face as in, in this technology field. Right? It's easy to just keep abreast of the things, but what are things you you that you have seen work in your um, in your life, as in right now in, in your career, what are the th- techniques that you, or things that you do that helps you in, in get keeping uh, up front or, or abreast of all these things? Issue? <laughs> <My class check. laughs> uh, okay, yeah. I'll start. So, for me. <laughs> oh, okay, J- Jacob can start. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so the, <coughs> I agree that the keeping up part is. Um, <laughs> it's a absolute nightmare because uh, yeah. it is it, there's a lot to to actually read up mm-hmm. on to understand and in such a short amount of time um, because it's it's always like it's evergreen it's, it's always changing um, so I think I actually do follow um, a lot of speakers on Twitter and um, when they tweet about something new I, I'll try to look into that oh okay or, um, so you follow top leaders on on, mm-hmm. on, on Twitter mm-hmm. I see yes yes Mike, Michael is a top leader no no no, 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 no in Singapore <laughs> best in Singapore move along move along <laughs> some <laughs> some <laughs> oops uh, um, and um, also we um, what's that websites so, so like Smashing Magazine um Dev two, um, sometimes Reddit. There's there is like some random threads that would talk about something new. Yeah. Um, Hacker news as well. I follow that quite a bit. So plenty Hacker of resources. News, okay. Yeah, mm. plenty of resources there to to um, <coughs> to sort of inform you of new mm-hmm. technologies. Um, but also, I think also to take note that. We shouldn't be always chasing after like something new, um, because it's as, as I say, as in, we are intact, so it's gonna be new all the time. So I think it's better to just yes. do well in whatever stack you have, and mm-hmm. then explore um, right. as needed. So build a foundation in something yeah. and make that your anchor point, and then from there. Uh, go out and learn other things. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's cool. It's a T-shaped engineer, kind of. Yes, yeah, a T-shaped engineer. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> the T-shaped engineer. Yeah, tell us what about the T-shaped engineer. What does it mean? Are you asking me? <laughs> You're the one who came okay, up. Okay, so it's it's kind of like um. So you know how a T is, right? So you have the horizontal and you have the vertical. And for people <laughs> who are in the live chat, can all pick and see. Um. So it's like. So the horizontal b- represents breadth, meaning like the number of skills or specialties you're in, uh, and the vertical one represents depth, which uh, which means like depth of knowledge or like you know how well versed you are in that particular skill, and so it's like um, so it's it's really it's the question of whether you're going to be a specialist or whether you're a generalist or whether you're going to be a mix of both. So it's um, yeah, and I think uh, it's what 
uh, Jacob saying because technology is constantly changing and there's always technolo- new technologies being uh, created and coming up new um, stacks mm-hmm. but there's also um, sad, uh, sadly there will be technology that will be depreciated as well or like not being supported which is always unfortunate but um, but so it's like technology is just constantly evolving um, like creature in a way but, there, but there's always new things coming up so it's also good to constantly have this breadth that grows but also don't forget to specialize in uh, right. to specialize one area yeah so like for me when I when I try to I, I'm more of a web developer right so sometimes I have to learn to do a little bit of I, in the past I did some iOS as well mm. and all that stuff it's like uh, I find that my knowledge in one area sometimes can translate there's some transferable skills uh, you know, I find, also find it very interesting that I I also have like an anchor language that, you, that I always turn to in the past it was PHP and then from that PHP I can learn JavaScript la, mm-hmm. and I, I, when I was doing iOS it was like Objective-C and a few other things and now Ruby <coughs> so it's like um, uh, having one anchor language that you're strong in and deep in and then from there you can use that in, to uh, learn other languages along the way, right? So, cool. Can, can. How about yourself? Okay, for me, it's more towards watching YouTube videos. <laughs> okay, uh, people like uh, Traverse, uh, Traverse Media, uh, Chris Hawk, those are actually two of the YouTubers that I actually watch, and most of the time they actually are quite ground to, uh, down to earth. And they will actually will tell you this is actually what I feel. Mm-hmm. And so y- when you when you listen to those people who are senior than you, you see oh okay I shouldn't be too, um, too too arrogant too. And also, I feel that uh, as as mentioned uh, the T shape thing. There's actually there's another one is actually by Reef Hoffman. He's actually the founder for LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. So he talked about tours of beauty. So tours you beauty. yeah. So you are actually working for like two to four years in the specific area that you want to work with and you have an arrangement with your company and say uh, maybe I want to work in marketing I want to work in software development or DevOps mm-hmm. you actually succeed and actually do something that is can contribute the company and after that you can actually continue it is actually originated originated from how military works which uh, which you are deployed for like certain spe- uh, specific years uh, out in the field so you actually go through a different um, roles and from there you actually gain the breadth of knowledge and stuff mm-hmm. so based on that you can actually have a very a good arrangement with multiple companies and see how can you grow your career and also how you can grow company in the meantime as well so that's one uh, to make you feel grounded as well because I myself I actually went through uh, doing the sales route and actually I, and I went to the web development route as well so now I'm embarking on myself to become a tech entrepreneur as well with my business partner I and all the freelancer so that is how I feel it will help you more la, if you look in terms of your career development on how you not be uh, humble yourself it's actually more like looking in terms of like a tour of duty so mm-hmm. you need to have specific what do you want to do for these two or, tr- uh, two or four years and you just go for it and slowly and see how you want to actually grow as optimally in the right. next five or ten years. Yeah. One 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 thing I okay so it, which is pretty cool. Uh, that, but that's from there. Let's segue to something a bit a bit, a bit more inter- uh, interesting. I, I had a I was interviewing a candidate today at at my workplace, and the one of the things that she the candidate I interviewed that she aspired to was to have to be able to work with a engineering team where she can learn and, and, and grow with, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's something that all junior developers hope for as they join the company, they hope for the mentorship, the mentoring, the nurturing is the environment uh, is there. La. Um, but I think on the other side, on the flip side, you also want to make sure that you yourself can, as a, as a developer joining a team like that, um, you can also work well with the, with the teammates. La. So maybe you, maybe you should, for example, you can you, you work in a very large team in Carousel. So what, why don't you share a little bit more about how uh, junior developers as they come in, what kind of things they could do? Or rather, what are the things that they, you see uh, that them do that, was, that make them more successful in, in adapting into the, into the company culture and all that stuff? 
Oh, this is, this is a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, just quote some examples. This, it might be easier to quote some examples. Don't want to date names, but just quote some examples. Quote some examples. Yeah. Um, so, I think within Carousel, a lot of us are more of on the peer level. So, we are more or less at the same experience level. So, I would say more junior would be the interns that we work with. Um, I think we we have worked with really crazy, crazy good interns that went on to do things that were beyond us. Uh. So um, I see a lot of initiative mainly. Um, like they they would ask for things that they want to do. Um, even like they don't go in and say like, oh, you know, uh, what can I do or like um, what what kind of projects are there for me to do. But it's rather like they will look at what we are really doing and then start like just bringing up like oh I, probably I can work on this portion of the project or probably I can do this certain part um, I don't think anyone currently has like the bandwidth to work on it I would want to take it up um, so I see a lot of initi- initiative moves I guess from, from the interns yeah right so in the sense you, 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 you find you value those who do who take proactive action in their learning and in their, uh, their, their ability to perform yeah, in the team, I see. How about Jacob? What, what have you seen uh, to be successful? I mean, maybe you can talk about yourself. How were you, when you yourself joined the team, like, uh, what are the things you, <coughs> like, I mean, we, we, we worked in SP Digital mm-hmm. quite a while ago, mm-hmm. and when, we, when you first joined our team, mm-hmm. uh, we, how do you think you, uh, the things that you did that kind of helped made you more effective in, in getting into the company culture and all that. Mm. So um, at SPD, um, so we do um, a lot of pair programming. Mm-hmm. Um, so for those who don't know, pair programming <coughs> is basically uh, two, two or more um, engineer developers working on um, the same uh, piece of code. So one person will be um, doing the typing, or the the other person will actually sort of um, be sort of like checking through what's mm-hmm. being written to 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 spot. And um, so I find that pair programming actually helps um, a lot um, because it does a lot of. Um, so when you pair program, you actually do a lot of knowledge transfer. So mm-hmm. for example, if I'm pair programming, I'm new. Um, I'll be asking, oh, what, so what does this say? This piece of code or this function, why is it written this way? Um, mm-hmm. Where should we look? And and stuff like that. Where mm-hmm. and and that actually helps uh, bring you up to speed a lot faster than um, yeah. actually sitting down looking at a piece of code so, <laughs> and trying to trying to digest and be like, um, I'm not too sure. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there are times where you can't pair program. Um, so when that happens, I would ask um, people who have worked on, um, say, a, that project before, um, where should I look? Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Has this been done before? What yeah. What can I do to, to, to get up to speed? Um, so, yeah, I think that's, that's how we cool. pretty much got up to speed. Yeah, I think as a junior developer, you're like given a you're given a license to to fail, ask questions. <laughs> yeah, to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should, we our, we want to make sure you succeed, right? <laughs> not not crash and burn, but we want to. But you're given a, a, a you're you're kind of still new to the to the code base, and you can ask all sorts of questions. And we sh- as 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 developers who are in the team, we should be open to you asking that kind of questions because sometimes if we uh, there's there are times that we don't really see things from your perspective, mm-hmm. like from like a new person joining the team. Uh, you be for example the first person trying out the new setup script mm-hmm. <laughs> that has been there sitting in the GitHub repo for like months and yeah. no one actually touched it. <laughs> whereas, whereas your code base has actually moved on. There are new things you need to spin up, yeah. right? For example, you need uh, two more containers to be running for yeah. your whole stack, or whatever, right? So it's like, what the hell? If you you don't want to actually take the initiative to kind of try it and join the new team, join the team and speed up the new like, um, start the new like, 
getting started steps, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Though you wouldn't know whether it's working or not, right? So, and being a junior person, you are actually have a good place to try that and contribute to the team in terms of either con- uh, documentation and even uh, improving the setup scripts, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's also this other uh, conversation that I've seen on Twitter about the this thing about being a glue, mm. right? About you being uh, stuck in doing a lot of these administrative things or rather your senior developers kind of take for granted, ah, you'll be doing taking minutes or you'll be the one writing documentation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and there has been some rec- some people who say, maybe we should, as a junior developer, maybe for our own personal growth, we should maybe refuse to take those things until you have been given that next level training or, mm-hmm. or rather, uh, so that they don't, they don't see you as a scrap goat. They always uh, throw admin work at you. Mm-hmm. Right? So uh, you have views about that, you guys? Uh, most of my interns that I came across, they are actually doing actual work, but despite these smaller parts, but they still do work, mm-hmm. and they are not specifically f- focusing purely on documentations. So I think it still comes down to expectations between the intern and also the company, yeah. and also the senior dev, uh, who are actually uh, facilitating or in charge of them on how do they assign the work. If they f- f- feel that oh, you, I, I will just give you a documentation. That's it. You don't need mm-hmm. to th- think of any other thing than okay that might be good but it will be better if, if just you can actually dedicate certain parts of things that you can't do like for me i actually dedicated uh the creation of the uh what, what is it is it design systems from right, right. with uh with one of my interns because mm-hmm. he was more well versed in the design aspects and he was doing more on the front end side mm-hmm. so i thought mm-hmm. this is very fun but i cannot do i know time so I, <laughs> yeah so you really need to delegate uh, because you there's certain portions of interesting projects <laughs> that you want to do, but because of interest of time and also the value in terms of it, might not align with what you do. So it will be better if you just dedicate the work that you think is interesting enough to them, and from there they actually can learn as well. That's actually what I did with my intern. So I just dedicate uh, the creation of design system. Uh, for design system is basically it's just like a brand guide on how you how the color looks like, how the font looks like. It's, it's a, a way for them to actually uh, unify the, the UI perspective. So it's actually when you have a design system in place, it's more like a template for whatever. You can just copy and paste and just play around with it and actually, nah, this is actually what I want in terms of the UI and they actually people can actually use it and actually can do something. This is useful for people who, uh, for companies who do not have a lot of designers mm-hmm. as well because once you have that design system, you can just give it to someone else and say, oh, this is actually what I want to do and you just follow it and da 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 mm. Yeah. So it will, be, it will improve the speed as well. Lah. But it still comes down to, if you don't have time, sometimes it's better to delegate certain things that you think is interesting, but you do not have the time to do it. Right. Yeah. That's right. basically what, what what's my from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rachel, do you have any um, opinion about that? Oh, well, it's right because, um, so, I joined a company where most of the developers were working remotely. So um, the physical office, um, there wasn't, okay, so because the thing is that the company that I was, that I was in, um, a lot of the developers were working like all over the place. And the physical office usually did not have developers, it was more for those who were involved in the business uh, the, the business or operational side of of the company and so um, a lot of onboarding involved a lot of documentation but of course I think for for certain good practices like pair programming um, it's a lot better t- if let's say everyone sits together in the office but I think also because there's an increase um, there's an increase in like, people working remotely uh, like some uh, I've met some com- some company founders where the operations are completely remote mm-hmm. so there's no there's no physical office at all and they're still able to do business but I think in terms of onboarding a lot of the good practices um, what I find usually assumes everyone sits together in the office right, right, in, right. in the same physical office um, so I think um, if let's say we want to have good practices for people who are working remotely it would be good if developers can come out with that I think documentation mm-hmm. is one way, especially when there are places where people sure. work remotely, where internet access is not very good. So video, sure. so sharing screens and video calls may not be the most optimal way. Mm-hmm. 
but um, if let's say there are certain resources that may be pre-recorded uh, kind of sessions, oh, okay. it may help. Okay. Um, but I, I mean, this one will depend very much on the resources available to the companies. I see. And and yeah, and a lot of different factors. But it's something that we can be, can explore because right, right. Yeah, remote work is increasingly becoming more common, so it's something yeah. that we should embrace. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are so many companies that we know of that are already doing like 100% remote, right? Mm. It's like automatic, the, the company behind WordPress. Mm. Everyone there is a uh, remote. Uh, the company behind, uh, what's the design tool? Uh, InVision. In, uh, InVision, InVision. InVision? Okay, yeah. InVision is also fully remote. So it's like uh, quite a few companies are doing that kind of practice. Right? And then I, I'm sure there'll be more ways to uh, basically, I mean, there are probably. Uh, a wealth of knowledge out there, but mm-hmm. I think we should probably try and figure those out and, mm-hmm. and see how we can help. I mean, I think there are definitely also people who are. We, I know of one guy who works at Automatic, but he's based in Singapore, mm-hmm. right? And then he's like, you know, working from home. Once in a while, you go to a co working space and kind of thing. So, but then he's not all alone, right? But then his team is already quite, quite a lot of uh, senior people in his team. Like, I'm not sure how well a junior developer will thrive in such an environment, but I guess. It's something to think about as well. Mm. So we got a few more, two more questions that just came in from Sharon. So how Hi, have Sharon. hello? Hi Sharon. <laughs> so how have you all been affected by the work from home uh, policies? And then number two, how do you remain productive while remote thing? So telecommuting is a thing now because of uh, a lot of companies we are practicing split, split, uh, split teams or even all work from home. Mm-hmm. Uh, like in case of SP Digital, like you're encouraged to work from home, you're keep away from the office. Uh, right, so um, so yeah, so how, how have you all been affected? Uh, and share some tips. You know, 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 Fine. Um, okay, so I think um, for me, uh, work from home is not, not a new concept. Um, I've done it previously as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, so I think to answer how to remain productive, um, I still struggle with that sometimes mm-hmm. because um, when you work from home, you're basically working in an environment where right. you it usually it's in, in like your, your bedroom where you sleep and you where you <laughs> where you work. Okay. So um, so yep. I actually struggle with productivity at, at times as well because it's it's mm-hmm. it's kind of like uh, it's like you don't have to commute to work you don't have to be in um, mm-hmm. the office so you get very comfortable uh, you probably don't have to change out change out your pajamas <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I think to remain productive uh, so one thing we for, for my team at, at least we still did was um, we continued with our daily stand ups right, we sort of right. um, update each other on what what we're doing and that's kind of sets a bit of the agenda of for the day mm-hmm. and um, so for me I kind of use that to to sort of plan what I need to do within the day and, um, and of course to remain productive um, I mean I, I still Take short breaks in between. Yeah, yeah. Walk to the mall, get a drink, um, because if you just stay at home in the same place one time, uh, if, at least for me, I go, I will go crazy. Right, right. So for me, I will just probably just split my day into like smaller portions. Right. Um, and that I think I find I found that that actually helps. Cool. Um, issue? Have you has your company tra- practiced that or oh. started working from home? Working or? from home. Yeah, yeah. So currently, I'm in the the team A, team B structure where like half the company is working from home. Um, so at Carousel, I've been working from home for about I think almost my work days about twenty to thirty percent are done work from home. Uh, we don't have much like concern about having like just warm bodies in the office. Uh. so as long as you want to be at home, you can do it. So uh, yellow. So I've been quite comfortable with it. So what I do is that I have my workspace at home highly mimic what I have at work. Um, it's almost like replica of it. I have oh. like an extra monitor, my laptop stand, keyboard, mouse. So I have like a two of everything. One in office and one at home. 
So once I get into the workspace, it, there's no difference between I'm at home or I'm in office. Mm. And that gets into that, that zone of, like I feel like, yeah, yeah, I'm in the work mode already, so mm. I'm, I'm, I'm working now. And then um, also don't change my schedule from day to day. Like if I'm, I'm working from home, I'll still be eating at the same time for my lunch. Mm. I'll still be getting off work at the exact same time. So it feels like there's no difference at all. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. I guess for you too, you have been kind of like remote, <laughs> remote working sort of <laughs> for yeah. a while. So, any tips for the people out there? Uh, usually, okay. Basically, for me, it's actually I do a weekly planning of yeah. what I need to. So basically, next week, what I'm supposed to do. So I will adopt something that's called a Pomodoro technique. Pomodoro. So yeah, yeah Pomodoro yeah. technique is a time management technique. So I actually set about ten Pomodoros. One Pomodoro is about 25 minutes. After that, you have a five minutes break. After four time, uh, four sessions of Pomodoro, you take a 15 minutes break. So basically, based on that, I could actually focus on it. Uh, and from then, whenever I start the things at like, all, oh, is like I need to start to go and do work. Then, oh, the time's up. Okay, I just need to break. <laughs> yeah, so that's basically how I plan my week. Uh. That's cool. And, that's cool. Uh, having, having a chat group, and also some project management software helps a lot as well. Mm-hmm. Mostly mostly chat groups help a lot because you can tell you, oh, this is actually what we're doing. Uh, this is some problems I face and this communication is very important. Mm-hmm. That's why I feel it's important. And also in terms of remote work, uh, you should have some discipline in it. Uh. Right. right. <laughs> it will take, take a while for you to actually get used to it. Mostly right. in terms of how you start your day yeah. as, as, as you should sure. realize it. You need to have your schedule. For me, it's more like uh, I really need to do my planning and other things. So, time management is important, and also, yeah, those are things I have lah. So the time management, having a rhythm, having a uh, defined start, and even having like the same setup for, mm. for uh, uh, your work workspace, at uh, home and, and work. So that kind of like lets you get into that zone, right? Um, sometimes uh, for me, I also change into my work clothes. Mm. The kind of like at least a, at least a shirt la. I will change into like like t-shirt. So and boxes. And, and <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> so I'll I'll, cha- I'll change into like my polo tee or something just to kind of like get myself into that zone. Right? And then I get. And for, for fortunately for me, I have a study room, so I kind of like uh, get into my study room and I close the door and then um, I get I have my keyboard and mouse and uh, my my stand and all that. Just like suddenly keep a monitor, all that setup like like, like what you should say, right? So it's pretty much the same setup, so that I won't. Uh, I still feel ca- I can be productive in mm-hmm. that place, right? Uh, and also having defined rhythm of like lunch and uh, and time to go out and all that stuff. So that's all really good advice. I hope uh, and I hope Sharon can learn something from this, and we all learn something from each other, right? Cool. And uh, actually, with that, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, do you guys have any last words for our viewers out there? No, no. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. <laughs> stay safe. Stay healthy. Yeah. And yeah, take. Subscribe to Engineer SG. <laughs> Ring the bell. <laughs> oh, and and also, I think um, we have our mentoring. Yeah, yeah mentoring we'll program. Yeah. About that in a while. Okay. yeah. 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 An uh, issue? Uh, don't be too scared, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah. cool. And Sharon just, Sharon just say thanks. Cool. Okay. Alright. Cool. Cool. Cool.